This will put the wind up you. This week, not a single energy company submitted a bid in the government's annual offshore wind auction, despite offering higher subsidised prices. In short, no one wants to buy into the wind energy market. You'd have more success selling Jimmy Savile's old tracksuits. My former colleague Andrew Neal put it well. He tweeted on the day when a government auction fails to produce any new investment in wind power because it won't guarantee a high enough, i.e. subsidy price. Existing wind power is currently providing 0.3 percent of our electricity needs. 0.3. You heard me right. He goes on to say, obviously, the wind has gone on strike. In response to the disastrous auction, predictable screams of derision from Shadow Climate Secretary Ed Miliband, a man who almost destroyed the Labour Party and is now going to do the same with our energy policy should Labour win power. Here's what he tweeted. He said, breaking, no new offshore wind projects in the UK this year. This is an energy security disaster for our country, he says. The Conservatives have trashed the crown jewels of the British energy system. Their failure will add a billion pound Tory bombshell to household energy bills. However, top economist Sean Richards schooled Miliband in the facts. He said nobody seems to have told Ed Miliband that UK wind farm electricity in total is 0.26 gigawatts as I type this. So his energy security is hot air, if you're kind, or a lie if you're less so. God knows where he got that one billion pound number from. Of course, this is the same Labour Party that, that, that have said that they will ban all future oil and gas licenses in the North Sea. This, as it emerges, that we're now paying Norway 14 billion pounds a year for gas, even though we have these precious resources on our own shores. It's like the Saudis buying sand or the Dutch buying porn stars. We've signed a deal to buy shale gas from America as well. You just you couldn't make it up. Sunak has rightly said that he'll grant hundreds of new oil and gas licenses. And this should be an important debating point at the next election. After all, this isn't just about the economy or the cost of living crisis. Energy security is national security. Meanwhile, former governor of the Bank of England, Mervyn King, who saved this country from economic Armageddon during the credit crunch, has said an obsession with net zero has fueled inflation. He said that Britain's influence on achieving global net zero emissions is negligible and the government places too much emphasis on arbitrary dates, banning petrol and diesel cars as well as gas boilers. Whilst raising serious concerns about climate change, concerns that I share as well, he has said that this blind push for net zero with no debates and no cost benefit analysis has become a quasi religious cult. How right he is. They are a bunch of cults. Meanwhile, amid a backdrop of uncertainty around green energy, this increasingly illiberal authoritarian conservative government have signed net zero into law, threatening Brits with jail if their home is not eco compliant and allowing the authorities to enter your home with force to install a smart meter. Debatable science, smashing the economy, telling people how to live. The media on board with one narrow message. Industry having the answer. All of this has worrying echoes of the pandemic, in which, in my view, a failed attempt to stop a seasonal respiratory virus has left us with a diminished, poorer, sicker country and a generation of damaged kids. I fear that we're going to make the same mistakes all over again with net zero. On wind power, how about this damning verdict from science writer Matt Ridley in today's Telegraph? He said the cost of subsidising wind is vast. The mining of minerals and pouring concrete that is required for a wind farm to have a huge pollution impact and a massive carbon footprint is outrageous. Voters know wind farms are a futile gesture and they will now punish the Tories accordingly. The refusal of private enterprise to invest in wind power in this country, even with the help of huge state subsidies, tells you everything you need to know about the viability of this unsightly, noisy, bird shredding technology. Wind power has lost its puff and the race to net zero is running out of steam.